we've looked at different kinds of induction, right? And even though induction is the same every time, test assume prove, test assume prove, test assume prove. The proof, the deductive logic, it looks different based on what category of result you've got. So we started with series because we knew a lot of those results already. What you were proving was an AP or a GP. You could access, you could prove those results by other mechanisms. We didn't need induction. But it very quickly went past APs and GPs, like the question we just did. You can come up with any kind of combination of things being added up. So long as you're an integer layered, induction will handle this. After series, we then looked at products. products. So before we get to that next one, if you're not adding things together, but multiplying, again, if you have a product that's expanding, 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 and it's still an integer there, you've got the first part of the product, second part, the third part, then induction will eat that for breakfast too. After that, we looked at divisibility. And the reason why divisibility fits is because you've got multiples and they live in integer land, right? Now, there are two categories here that I've gotten down, which I've alluded to, uh, but we haven't, we actually haven't done any questions so far. They are geometry. So for example, one of the ones I said, you actually have met some of the geometry questions in your exercise. Um, a classic one is the angle sum of an n-sided polygon, right? That's easily proved by induction. And the last one that I also alluded to that we haven't done is a proof involving calculus. So for example, we have shown, we proved it last year, that the derivative x to the n is nx to the n minus 1, right? And we, we can prove that through first principles and then some fancy binomial expansions and so on. But if you start from this guy, right, if you begin with him and then you postulate, you make a conjecture and then you do the assumption and you do the proof, because you can use this and you can treat these guys as integers, you can prove this law. And then there are other ways of extending it to the other real numbers. Okay? So if you want to, you can do that. Now what I've left off is what is generally, I mean, not universally, but most people regard as the hardest category of induction proof. And that's inequalities. Okay? Now, inequalities bend your brain a little bit because the logic of an inequality is very, very different to the logic of an equation. And all of these guys, despite how different they are, they're all working with this equals that, okay? And now we kind of enter a different land. So I'm going to go through um, this question with you. It's, I think it's from one of the exercises that I scanned to you. Um, I don't believe I've seen it in HSC, but variants of it will exist. Here's the result we want. <coughs> Now, uh, we're going to have a go at this. I'm going to tell you right from the outset, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this, okay? And they're both really kind of okay. I'm going to let you settle in your mind, and it, I, I expect it to be kind of 50-50, which way you prefer, which method you like, but it's really important that even if you settle on one, you're like, this one's cool, you must master both, because sometimes you'll, you'll only be able to do this one, or it'll only be feasible with this way, and other times you want the other method up your sleeve, okay? Yeah. Like is seven plus five is twelve. It has to if it goes on the dot. If it's equal to a larger than twelve, of course it will be. But like I'm just saying, this question is really like. I would say no. I would say no. I don't think it's as obvious as. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm less. Of, actually, you know what? Sorry, let me take it back. Let me rewind. I know I'm less of a mathematician than a lot of the people in this room. It's just that I've got a metric. 12 years up on you, but I look at that and I don't think it's obvious at all. Because like 7 plus 5 is 12, so if you put it to the power of 1, you just get 7 plus 5, so it can't be 1, but if it's 2, then it's obviously going to be larger than... Like so, just, so basically what you're doing is, is actually a proof by induction. <laughs> That's exactly what oh, you're doing, okay. okay? So let's set this out, okay? The two proofs that I'm going to show you, right? Induction's always test assume proof. Test is to improve, okay? The test is always gonna be the same. Like there's no, oh, how, which way shall I try to test this? So that's gonna be the same. But when we do the assumption and the proof, it's gonna bifurcate like this, okay? So let's begin with the common step. Let's start with a test for the first allowable value, which is two. Okay? So, 
Usually I start with the left hand side, I do some stuff with it. For reasons that will become clear in about two minutes, I'm actually going to start with the right hand side. Okay. What is the right hand side equal to before n equals 2? Well, as I've mentioned before, you don't take any shortcuts on the first line, you substitute it in directly. 7 squared, of course, is 49 plus 35, so it looks like I'm getting 74. Okay? So I have a number for the right hand side. Let's have a go at the left. The left hand side is just 12 squared, which is 144. Now, at this point, what was I trying to demonstrate? I was trying to get to that inequality, right? And this number, this 144, is greater than the right hand side. So I can say that that is bigger, okay? Now you might see why I started with the right hand side because this lets me conclude with a line that has the left on the left and the right on the right. And I mean, you can switch it around if you want, but then you have to switch the inequality as well and my little simple brain gets confused. So, if you start on the right, you will end up with a line that looks nice and neat and it just follows that pattern, okay? Now, let me just point out, going from the second last line on the board to the last line, this is the first thing that makes inequalities different to equations, right? When I said this right hand side, this number is 74. Right? This number is 74. That's because 144 is clearly bigger than that. When you're dealing with inequalities, we're going to sort of phase in and out of equations and inequalities so long as we sort of obey what's bigger than what, okay? So this is the first thing I want you to point out that's very, very different from equations. From equations, everything's got to stay the same. I mean, that's what equations means, right? But inequalities, a little more fluid. Right? So let's move on now.